Thank you for joining me for this preview series for the American Civil War Museum's upcoming symposium, The Soldiers' Civil War. This event will be held in Richmond at our Tredegar site on February 19th and will also be available via live stream. I'm Rob Havers, President and CEO of the American Civil War Museum. Each week leading up to the symposium, I'll be talking with the speakers to get their insights and reflections about their study of the Civil War. This year's outstanding event explores many aspects of what it meant for ordinary men to be thrust into the epicenter of conflict and how they coped at the time and in the war's aftermath. We hope you will join us in person or virtually for Symposium 2022, The Soldiers' Civil War. Until then, I am pleased to bring you this preview. Welcome everyone to another brief taster for our upcoming symposium, Symposium 2022, The Soldiers' Civil War here at the American Civil War Museum. I'm Rob Havers, President and CEO, and today I am delighted to be joined by one of our speakers, Dr. Peter Carmichael, Fleur Professor of Civil War Studies and Director of the Civil War Institute at Gettysburg College. Delighted to have you with us, uh, Dr. Carmichael. Thank you yeah. for joining us. It's Pete. Yes, thank you so much. Happy to be here as well. Your symposium topic is a fascinating one. To say or not to say, what can we learn from Confederate soldiers who spoke their letters? Perhaps you could tell us a little bit about how you became interested in this uh, avenue of inquiry. I uh, was interested in the largest execution that occurred in Lee's army after Gettysburg. And in doing some research, uh, one of the individuals, a man named John Futch, F-U-T-C-H, from North Carolina, uh, he was one of the men who was executed and then discovered that he had a cache of letters at the North Carolina Department of Archives. And as I was reading them, it became apparent to me that John Fudge was illiterate and that he was speaking his letters to other men who were barely literate themselves. And so I became more attuned or more sensitive to the fact that there is a substantial amount of letters from that group of soldiers, Union and Confederate men who are not privileged, men who are not very well formally educated. And so what we have from them is we have them speaking the war. And when they speak the war, they get us to a ground level of that conflict that we typically don't see from that class of soldiers where they are more comfortable with pen and paper. I'm curious to know how you determine that these letters were uh, delivered verbally and then, and then written down by others. Were yeah, there any so particular tells? It sometimes becomes a little bit more of a challenge to determine whether a soldier is speaking it or not. But what one can in fact be fairly confident about is the educational level of a particular soldier. So a man named Wright Vincent from Georgia served in the Western theater of the war. It's clear to me that he was certainly, uh, if he wrote these letters, it was a true struggle for him. And it still came across as the spoken word. And again, I just can't stress how powerful that is. And that what we get from these letters is a critique of the war in a way that I think we associate with World War I. And what I mean by that is that we have men who are condemning the war as an act of inhumanity. And so what they are able to do is write about the brutality, write about the suffering and do it in such a way that it is not translated through the lens of Victorianism or sentimentalism. So again, when we think about your audience, you know, we've all read hundreds, thousands of letters that have been published. Those that are published, they come from the most articulate. Those people, their ideas uh, are filtered through the dominant culture of the day. These poor men, these semi-literate men, they're certainly influenced by those cultural uh, uh, trends, but, but, those lenses, they don't shape, they don't filter in the same way, right, as, as those uh, more privileged men are. So we get a glimpse of the war, as I can keep saying, uh, that is, is a unique one, uh, because the letters of the poor, the letters of the semi-educated, 
uh, they just weren't preserved with the uh, same sort of regularity uh, that letters were of the, of the original classes. So thank you very much for that. And we look forward to seeing you here in person in Richmond in February for uh, the American Civil War Symposium 2022, the Soldiers' Civil War.